So, once again continuing our modeling and simulation applications in agriculture and NRM. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the conceptual simulation optimization framework for agriculture water management. Here, we discussed about how that hydrological model and crop model can work together in an integrated manner and how validation, you know, sensitivity analysis, etc., can be done in an integrated manner because that actually makes your you know computations modeling exercise much more robust. So, with this kind of integrated framework at present time, our modeling you know exercise has become much more convincing and also the gap between real condition in nature and the modeling system environment has gone significantly down. Let us now uh, look at different you know crop models that has been applied in agriculture over last you know almost 60, 70 years or so. So, if you look at the history or chronology of the development of crop models in agriculture especially, you will see that one of the significant you know initiations of this modeling exercise started in 1940. 1945 food and agricultural organization established. 1950 in another one decade time, the early computational analysis of soil plan and water relationships has come into picture and the famous Van Babel and De Witt, they were actually you know the pioneer of this computational analysis. When you work in the field of crop model, you will find the name of De Witt quite often coming in picture. Within another one decade by 1960, the crop models for growth and photosynthesis has been developed by Duncan et al. So, this particular slide actually I made it for you to be able to appreciate the speed or the rate at which the crop models you know has been developed, improved and strengthened over the last almost 5 to 6 decades. By 1970, land evaluation framework was you know announced or given by FAO. So, once that came into picture, then land related modeling work also started with you know giving focus on the crop production and crop growth. What are those? We got Elec Rose in 1970 and Gossim in 1976 and then Back Rose in 1978. So, you see the way you know between 1950 and 1970 or 80 within 30 years, so much of development has taken place. This pace actually will be much higher when you you know go towards present time. So, 1980s another decade remote sensing came into picture in a very significant manner. Remote sensing applications in crop production, crop growth also started. So, naturally the inputs of remote sensing exercises also started uh, getting integrated into crop model. So, modelers started actually you know uh, doing some kind of adjustment to bring in the remote sensing data into crop growth model. Now, models like papran, sucrose, many of you might have heard these models, soya grow about soybean, peanut grow, ceres mage, very famous, ophost and epic. So, these model even today are being used. So, you can see that how in every 10 years the field of crop modeling is developing. 1990, application of computer, large computer, smart computer into computing started. So, once that started then of course, the modeling uh, functionality also got strengthened and further developed. So, models like DAISY, CROPSYST, ALMANAC, ORIJA, HARMES, APSIM, STIX, they came into picture. Now, out of this many of you might have heard about APSIM, ORIJA, these are very very popular crop models and uh, even today the models that we have with us 
many of them has wrote with you know this kind of models that came into picture in, in 1990s. Then 2000 improvement of remote sensing in the last you know 10 15 years between 1990 and 2000 that decade was quite significant for remote sensing geographic information system and its application so naturally crop modelers took the benefit of that improvement in remote sensing satellite technology softwares and also climate models so these all started getting as input into the crop model now the model also got change further strengthen and develop we got model like glam info crop from our own iari indian agriculture research institute and i was you know as doing my phd at that point of time when info crop at iri in front of me actually was being developed by a group of researcher and some of our students aqua crop in 2009 came into picture so these crop models now can actually uh, in 2000 they started actually somehow integrating or at least accommodating the outcomes of various climate model into that so naturally uh, you know the predictions of of these models will be much more you know convincing than the previous ones 2010 within that 10 years again 2000 to 2010 was quite significant in the field of crop modeling you know exercises improvement of microwave remote sensing and then smarter satellite nano sensors came into picture then remote sensing softwares climate models actually improved quite significantly between 2000 and 2010 so then we got unmanned you know different kind of uavs into crop fields also so where people you know started using this kind of you know instruments to observe monitor the crop growth patterns widespread of application of artificial intelligence uh, started in you know 2010 and during those time and of course today almost every aspects now artificial intelligence is coming in to play a big role now models which are actually developed post 2010s yeah, you will find that uh, model like monica simdualke armosa these are the models which are now applying various kind of latest technologies having said that still still the old is gold so if you look at the you know models which are developed very very early in 1980s 70s and 90s they are still what you call are the mother of our crop models like Oryja, uh, sucrose. So invention of technologies and then utilization of smart technologies into crop modeling exercises is a dynamic process. Almost every day, you know, people in this community are working and trying to get the best benefit of existing technology. How are we now, 2020 onwards? So now of course we have very powerful you know artificial intelligence technology fantastic you know uh, machines uh, we have with us we have also nano uh, chips nano materials um, nano sensors with us so we have lot of now you know smart technologies in hand naturally we can expect that uh, the models that will be developed further in this decade will be much more smarter so we have now got money hot crop model and then the emphasis actually nowadays is giving towards the climate smart agriculture because today you know it is a fact that climate is changing we cannot stay further in denial mode now sustainable agriculture we had been advocating what is you know in climate uh, smart agriculture is new is that the climate resilience or climate adaptation or mitigation component is also included where addressing the various aspect of sustainable agriculture so today's model today's crop model has to consider those aspect to remain you know what you call contemporary we must uh, you know use those you know aspect into our crop models so now it's 2022 so i hope that uh, before the end of this decade so by 2029 you and me we would be able to see uh, you know couple of more smarter models 
which includes various aspect and technologies and then you know allow us to handle uh, you know the climate smart agriculture in a really smart manner. Now if you look at the various hydrological models and the climate models how they can actually be utilized together or in an integrated manner especially for agriculture purposes. Now if we look at the crop models which uh, actually being used to simulate the crop yield, yield loss, greenhouse gas emission, photosynthetic rate and also to simulate of course nitrogen, phosphorus, various nutrient you know use efficiency. We have hydrological models I discussed in the previous lectures that they also look at flood situation and then reservoir outflow control efficient use of water irrigation nutrient transport you know contaminant transport so these things hydrological models are looking at climate models as all of you know that they look at the various climate data local as well as global scale so we have gcms global circular models and we have also lcms local circular models regional model model also we have climate model so now this climate model actually gives uh, you know climatic data for the historical time period and future time scale for different scenario okay so i'll not go into detail because as per ipcc as you know that uh, there are couple of scenarios on the basis of that how much percentage of greenhouse gases that uh, you know any country can actually can regulate or commit to reduce on basis of those scenarios uh, climate model can be run and accordingly the uh, result or outcome or prediction that you may expect. Local climatic data can be obtained of course from climatic models that can be used as inputs as I said into crop models. Climate model can also give an efficient you know prediction of crop yield then greenhouse gas emissions for you know several scenarios which have been given by IPPC. So, sometime climate model also can you know efficiently uh, give an idea about climate change and extreme events uh, like flood, drought as well as uh, even a short uh, time weather changes over a uh, particular area. Now remote sensing also India is, is as you know that we are quite strong in the field of remote sensing very good quality of land use land uses and different land capability classes also are being given by remote sensing data. We also can get from remote sensing various crop parameters, phenological data, crop coverage or acreage. So these data nowadays are coming with very very high resolution. So the accuracy of the information which we achieve from or which we obtain from remote sensing uh, information or data is quite high. Now those data can actually help in crop condition monitoring by providing vegetation indices uh, data. Disease detections, weed control which are very very important aspect of sustainable yield of various crops can also be actually detected or monitored by remote sensing technology. Now all these uh, kind of uh, instrument or what, what I call kind of power that you have in your hand then if you can somehow can integrate this kind of tools then you can imagine that how you know in a robust manner you can actually address the issues of climate change and its impact on crop productions or crop growth and also the emissions of greenhouse gases. So entire those you know interrelationships can be studied in a very very effective manner. Now the commonly used models in subsurface and subsurface water balance and transport processes that we have in case of hydrological models SWAT, MIXC, HEC, HMS, HEC, RS these are all very popular you know hydrological models that many people are using across the world. Subsurface uh, hydrological model which is very popular some of you might have already used is MOTFLOW. Many people in IIT system also you know are using 
mod flow vendor zone transport models like hydras or zqm swap these actually provide a lot of opportunities for researcher to study you know various uh, transport uh, phenomena subsurface drainage model drain mode which also helps analyzing and studying various uh, you know subsurface or uh, drainage phenomena so in nutshell we have now in our hand you know uh, many tools uh, to study various aspects which can actually impact uh, the pro overall agricultural growth and productions in relations to water climate soil okay so if we can integrate those things then definitely the outcome or the predictions of this simulation and modeling exercise will have much more robustness and that will definitely facilitate the process decision making process in a much better manner the loss due to some unseen event will go down so farmers of course the loss of farmers income uh, for various regions also will get reduced so there is multiple you know benefits that that we can achieve if we can successfully integrate some of these very powerful tools now climate models often you might have heard in the field of specially you know climate change now just now i mention about uh, global climate model gcms and uh, regional climate model rcms numerical weather prediction model nwp now these all are actually quite you know powerful tools for studying the climate of our ecosystem gcm it looks it's a some complex mathematical representation of our climate system it takes care of ocean atmosphere land surface all these interaction and and also you know they provide the various you know dynamics within those system but the resolution of course as it is in global scale you can anticipate that it will be of relatively coarse resolution then we have various uh, model for various uh, systems so these are all actually quite popular and many of our researchers in india uh, have been using hat cm3 quite uh, frequently as well as some of the others that are mentioned in this slide this climate model uses actually are mainly for projection of climate change and climate forecasting as i said that this helps in preparations decision making before an unwanted event takes place so you can avoid losses of life economy and many other things now regional climate model the resolution is little bit high once again it is also a mathematical model for giving you know relatively small scale information for future climate and for a particular region these are fine scale spatio temporal information and these are derived in terms of you know rcm from coarse resolution gcm right so from entire globe it go looks into some uh, region that's why it's known as regional climate model and those models are some of them are are remo crcm precis precis uh, actually a model also very popular among many of us and then numerical uh, weather prediction model nwp it is again a complex mathematical model for predicting the you know weather using mass momentum and energy conservation so lot of you know principle of physics involved in this kind of modeling numerical methods also used in this kind of model to solve certain complex you know uh, hydrodynamics and thermodynamical equations these models usually used for short uh, durations and fine spatial resolutions okay so as an example uh, we have noaa sirs uh, in a 20 cr model which is one of the numerical weather prediction model these models are relatively complex in nature and it requires a little bit of experience in programming as well as you know uh, modeling exercises so with uh, strong knowledge in mathematics and physics and little bit of programming uh, one can actually get trained very quickly to run this kind of very useful model now let us see the use of this uh, climate models in the field of agriculture you just saw in the previous slide that uh, we have gcm rcm and wp from these models we will get certain outcome so the climate model data 
will be downscaled and then this downscale data will be corrected bias corrected or try to reduce you know the error as much as possible and then they will get into the crop model as input because we know that crop model requires the different weather parameters climatic information as well. Now, once this comes then crop model can definitely capture the future scenarios future you know different weather parameters on that basis the predictions of crop growth future yield greenhouse gas emissions will be much more you know robust then without having this climate model data into the system. So, today's crop model can actually predict the future in a much more better way because we are getting the output from very very powerful climate models and that output are being used as input for different weather parameters into the crop model. Now, the downscaling exercise is critical of course, because you are bringing in from a very you know high scale or huge uh, you know uh, region to a particular small region of data. So, downscaling by transformation of coarse resolution data to a fine resolution scale is one of the important task and then it is also important to overcome the mismatch between the local regional data and the global data. So, this particular exercise it requires little bit of expertise and training to do it in an efficient manner. Statistical downscaling is also often done in case of this kind of model. Raw scale climate variables which, uh, which actually we get from GCMs those climatic variables by different statistical technique like regression, k nearest neighborhood, support vector regression, transport functions like artificial neural network are used to downscale uh, this data or information. Some of the commonly used hydrological and crop modeling exercise use this kind of downscale data quite frequently. These are actually statistical downscaling method computationally lesser complex then the dynamical downscaling using you know different numerical models. So, statistical downscaling one may find as I just said that little bit easier than the dynamical downscaling. High resolution scenarios might produce relatively easily the uh, downscaling process. Large amount of data are required and uh, relationships are valid only within the data set range which are used for training. So, derivation of on any significant relationships for all variables might not be possible. So, when you have certain benefits uh, for statistical downscaling. So, this is one aspect uh, you know which uh, we need to keep in mind that uh, we cannot derive the significant relationships uh, for all the variable that we want to. Now, dynamical uh, downscaling which I said that it is little bit complicated than probably statistical downscaling some people find it in that way. So, in this uh, downscaling generation of local climate information using high resolution regional and climate model RCMs derived from coarse resolution GCM which I just mentioned in the previous slide by you know some initial conditions then some boundary conditions. So, you try to now downscale it in a uh, dynamic manner from GCM towards RCMs high computational facilities and modeling expertise is required for dynamical downscaling. Yes, this is true that dynamical downscaling is much more fascinating and it also probably provides a better downscaling, but at the same time you need little bit of extra expertise for doing uh, such kind of dynamical downscaling. Mm -hmm.